Hello and welcome to this guided project. I'm Nawaz Nazuro Adam. I'm your instructor for this guided project. I'm a computer engineer. I've taken a number of advanced level courses in data science and have developed some data science and machine learning projects. This project is for anyone who wants to develop data science and machine learning projects, but have limited resources on his computer and limited time. I will teach you how to use the Google Collaboratory via your web browser to develop a fake and real news detection data science project. As a prerequisite to successful completion of this course, you need to be familiar with Python programming and you need to have the basic knowledge of statistics and machine learning. You will accomplish a lot by the end of this project. I will show you how to launch Google Collaboratory from your web browser, create runtime environment for your project, create a Python notebook to house the project, understand the project design, know how to import your training data into Google Collaboratory, develop the project, train and evaluate your model performance, and finally, how to extract the model as deliverable for use in your application of choice. Is it web application, native application, and what have you? Now let's get started. You can see from the address bar, the URL of the Google Collaboratory, which is collab.research.google.com. Here I am on the homepage. If you don't have a Google account, you need one in order to use Google Collaboratory. Click on the sign in button at the top of the page here. If you don't have if you don't have a Google account, you can create one by clicking on this create account link and you follow the on screen prompts to finish creating your account. If you already have a Google account, just enter your sign in details. So let me enter my login details, my email address, Nawaz Naziru at at gmail dot com and I click on next I enter my password okay I need to be verified so I choose uh, to receive text on my phone in order to finish the verification process 621 621 425 and I click on next Yes, you can see my profile picture here, which means I have successfully logged into my Google account. Uh, you do not need any credit card to use Google Collaboratory, provided it is for a fair use as in the case of this project. Pause the video and do all the steps I have done so far before proceeding you can import already existing jupyter uh, python notebooks from google drive under this tab or from github or you can upload here and you choose the file from your local computer Since we are not building on an existing project, down here you will see new notebook. 
and you click on it to create a new notebook. In case you have missed this welcome window, maybe you mistakenly close it. Then you can go to the file tab here. You click on the file tab and choose new notebook. New notebook here and you click on it. Uh, the new notebook will be automatically saved on your Google Drive account. In fact, your Google Drive account automatically becomes storage for your Collab workspace. At the top of the page here, here, click on this, you see this untitled, and rename the notebook with the name of your choice. And Let's give it the name of the project and you just hit enter and you can see the, new, the notebook has been renamed to fake and real news notification which uh, corresponds with the name of our project. Uh, for faster training, especially if the data set for training your model is large, you need GPU in your runtime environment. So click on runtime at the menu bar here. You can see change runtime type here and then you select GPU and you click on save. Now your runtime environment is GPU. Congratulations on completing the first task of this project. In this task, you have learned how to launch Google Collaboratory from your web browser and how to get started by creating a brand new Python notebook to house your project codes in an appropriate runtime environment. In the next task, we will look at how to approach the problem of fake and real news detection using machine learning. Look for the data to train our fake and real news detection machine learning model on Input the data into our Google Collaboratory workspace and make it ready for use. See you in the next task. Hello and welcome back. In this task, we will explain the approach to take to detect fake and real news using machine learning. Get the data to use for training your fake and real news detection machine learning model and learn how to import and use the data in your Google Collaboratory project. Using the design principle of keys, keep it simple stupid. The simplest way to identify fake or real news is by its title without having to go through the content. This is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to train a machine learning model to learn how to identify news as either fake or real news by just the news title or the headline. Thus, basically, this is a binary classification problem. To train and test our models, we make use of the false of the fake and real news data set by Ahmad H. Traore, I, and Saad S, which is available on Kaggle.com. You need to download the files and add them to your Google Drive storage in order to use them in Google Collaborate. In a new tab, in the browser of your local computer, not this virtual browser, I'm using this just to illustrate to you the process. In a new tab, you go to this URL and you hit enter. When you land on the page here, you scroll down, you can see here we have the two training data, the fake.csv and the true.csv. So, to download this fake.csv file, you click on this 
download sign and it will be downloaded to your local computer. It is assumed that you have carried out all the steps I have mentioned. The next thing is to import our data files into our notebook. For that, we are going to make use of the PyDrive library to import our data. You can check the PyDrive documentation on how to import data into a notebook from Google Drive. But there is one challenge and it is how to get the file ID. The easiest way goes like this. You simply you right click the file name in your drive account and you choose to get the shareable link. Let me go to my Google Drive account, which I can do so simply through this collab icon. Click on the collab icon. Now I'm in my Google Drive account and I just simply search for the files, the data files. I search for fake.csv, hit enter, and here is it. Here is the fake.csv file I uploaded. I right click on it, and you can see get link here. I click on get link. And this is the link here I copy the link let me just go up uh, above here and paste it there control V I'm just pasting so that I copy so anything after this D you can see after this D here in the URL after that D so just before this view is the end of the file ID. So I copy it by right clicking and choose copy. And thus the ID for the fake.csv file. Let's convert the files to pandas data frames this way. First, I need to import pandas import pandas as pd the df the df fake news data frame which is a collection of fake news in the form of data pandas data frame and the df true news which is a collection of real genuine news data in form of a pandas data frame as well in this task, you learned a simple approach to take to take fake and real news using machine learning. You also learned how to get the data to use for training your fake and real news detection machine learning model, and learned how to import and make the data ready for use in your Google Collaboratory project. In the next task, we will have an overview of the basic tools in the menu bar and sidebar of the Google Collaboratory Jupyter Notebook. This, this is to equip you with the necessary tools you need to accomplish the upcoming project task. Goodbye and see you there. Welcome back. It is high time you know the tools you will need in the menu bar of the Google Collab Jupyter Notebook. In this task, you will be able to add a new cell add comments, delete a cell, copy and code cell content, save your work, execute your codes and restart the session if things go wrong without losing your written codes. To add a new cell and you scroll up, you see this plus code sign and you click on it to add a new cell. So you see a new cell has been added or alternatively, just below the highlighted cell, you can see this plus plus code toolbar you click on it 
and a new cell is added. The plus cut main function is to add a cell below a selected cell. You can as well use the insert tab to add a new cell below or above from the options there like this. You go to insert and you can see cut cell text cell and when you select cut cell you see a new cell has been added. To delete a cell click on this edit tab you see edit here at the top and select delete cells you can see delete selected cells here there you will see other options you can use like cut you can see cut cell or selection you can see pairs you can see select and others you can as well do find and replace your work is saved automatically from time to time but to avoid unexpected problems you have to be saving your work after some time whenever you remember doing so to save your work immediately you click on the file tab and then select save file tab and below you see and among the options you see self. Under the file type, you see other tools like revision history. This is a revision history. Which if you click like this, you can choose to revert your work to a particular point in time if things go wrong. All these are checkpoints and you can choose to revert your notebook to an earlier stage and this is helpful if things go wrong to run a cell and see its output there is play button beside every cell and whenever you hover your mouse on a square you see the play button appears or you can click on the run time here at the top and choose one of the various options for running selected cells all of the cells you can run selection you can run all the cells here run all you can run cells before or after a selected cell or some selected cells and so on to stop the running of a selected cell Click on this stop icon that appears after clicking on the play button. You see this stop and you click on it and the cell execution stops. In general, to stop any code execution, whether in a single cell or across multiple cells, you go to the runtime tab. And select this interrupt execution and every code execution will stop if things go wrong or you notice some misbehaving under the runtime tab here you can choose to restart the runtime or to factory reset the runtime Restart the runtime here, or you factory reset the runtime. The difference between the two is that the later, in addition to deleting your local variables, it also deletes your files as well. But in both, your written codes remain intact. Not all cells will contain codes. We would like to have some text in our notebook for titles, explanations of things as comments, and discussion of our choices as we write our codes. This is where this plus text tool comes in handy.
Pause the video now and make sure you practice what you have learned in this task in your workspace. Finally, you can click on the settings at the top beside your profile picture. This. And you can change things like the editor font size. In this task, you learned how to add a new cell, add comments, delete a cell, copy and cut cell content, save your work, execute codes and restart the session if things go wrong without losing your written codes. In the next task, we will visualize our data and clean it to avoid training our model on data with inconsistencies, which can reduce the performance of our model. See you in the next task. Welcome back. In this task, we will explore and visualize the contents of the two CSV files in the form of Pandas data frames we created. We are going to display the data in various charts. Look for and fix missing values, duplicate values, class imbalance, and all other relevant data cleaning tasks. Let's display the first 20 fake news articles. So type df underscore fake underscore news dot head first 20 in bracket unless run the code. Oh, we get an error. DF fake news is not defined. Remember that we have not run any code before. So we need to run all the above codes first. So I go to runtime and I choose run all. Okay, I need to enter my verification code. In order to proceed so I click on this link I choose my Google account I type in one of the two codes and I click on next this is asking for my permission agreed and allow this is the code I need I copy it and then I go back and paste it here inside this box this box inside this box that says enter verification code so control V and then I hit enter and yes you can see the authentication press process has finished and the other cells are running And at last, yes, here is the first 20 news articles from the fake news data set. You see that each news article is presented in a row with its title, which is the news headline, the text, which is the news content, the subject, which is the news category, and the date it was published. The data format and content seems okay after quick inspection. Let's see the last 20 fake news articles. Pause the video and try repeating same for the real news. All is well for now. The two data sets seem okay and consistent. Let's investigate the counts. You see you have 23,481 fake news and 21,417 true news. Thus, there is imbalance between the amount of fake news data and true news data. This may affect the performance of the model, but I do think that this can be for good because we want the model to be more learned in identifying fake news than true news. As such, no need of going for solutions to the imbalance classification problem like the smudge analysis.
Let's create the functions for finding and fixing missing and duplicated values and run them on the two data frames. Okay, let's call the find missing values function on the DF fake news. On the fake news data frame. Well, I have not run the function definition. Let me run. I run the other function, the removing duplicates function. Then I run the find missing values function on the DF fake news. And here is it. And you can see that there are no any missing values. Let me repeat the same for the true news data frame. There are no missing values in the true news data frame as well. So there were three duplicates and they were removed. And that's nice. Let me do some for the true news. And you can see that there were 206 duplicated rows in the two news data frame and they were removed successfully. It is good to display data in charts because through them we can discover some hidden patterns and properties of the data. Let's use Seaborn plots. Okay. Now I want to get my Seaborn plot and here it is. As can be seen, from this Seaborn plot, there is imbalance in the amount of data across the news categories. But for this application, that's not a problem due to the fact that here we are classifying based on whether a piece of news is fake or not and not predicting the category of a news. In this task, we saw data visualization and cleaned our data. In, in the next task, we are going to label the two data sets and do some feature extraction to make it perfect for training our model on. See you in the next task. Hello and welcome back. In this task, we will label the two data sets by adding a label column, match them and convert the data to numeric form. Let's create a new feature, which is a column in Pandas data frame called label. The label consists of our desired output. That is why we want our model to output. If fake news, the label for that row should be zero, and if real genuine news, it should be one. That's what we are going to train our model to learn. So let's add a new cell and write the code for that. Let's create a new cell and add the code for merging the two data sets. Computers, as their name suggests, understand things only through calculations, and we can't do calculations with text only numbers and especially machine learning for example neural networks they give results by doing some calculations on the inputs which cannot be something non-numeric thus we need to find ways of converting our text data to numbers to achieve that we will use the scikit line feature extraction functions which you can read more about in the scikit line official documentation let's go ahead and import the scikit line library module we will choose the count vectorizer and TFDIF transformer. Before we proceed, pause the video and do what we have done to this point. Let's add a custom function to remove punctuations and stopwords, which do not make much difference in machine learning tasks. I named the custom function text 
process. Well done. That's it for this task. We have arrived at the border and farewell to data preparation and pre-processing. We are done with the data portion of data science. In the next task, we are going to see the real stuff, the machine learning aspect of data science, where we build and train a model to learn how to identify fake and real news. I will be glad to see you there. You are highly welcomed to this task. In this task, we will create a machine learning model and train it on our data set. Before we create our model, let's split our data into two. We train with one and later test the performance of the model with the other one, and that makes sense. I will make use of the train test split from SKLAN. I say from SK LAN dot model selection import train test split. Xtrain contains the input training data and Ytrain the targeted values. Xtest contains the input test data and Ytest the targeted test values. To train our model, let's try the scikit-learn library deep learning model called the multi-perceptron classifier. Multiperceptron neural network is one of the best when it comes to binary classification problems. Here is the MLP classifier from Scikit-Learn. For the sake of reusability and ease of change of parameters, let's put everything in a pipeline. We are going to put the count vectorizer, the TF-IDF, the model, and others. I have now put everything in a pipeline and name it news classifier. Finally, let's train the model on our data using the fit method. So you add a new cell and we write A news classifier dot fit and we pass in our training data. We want the model to fit, that is to get trained on our training data. So we pass in the training data. X train, comma the targets, which is Y train, and we run. But before that, we created functions and variables that the model needs to train with, and we didn't execute those functions and variables. As such. Let's simply run all the cells in the notebook. So let me go to one time and choose run all. I need to enter the verification card from Google again. So let me click on this link. Choose my account. Yes, it's me. I click on allow to give permission. And I copy the code and go back and paste here 
and hit enter. Now the soils are running. And yes, it has finished draining. Pause the video and do same now before continuing. It takes around six minutes to finish training the model through the fifth method when you select the GPU in your own time. Congratulations, we have successfully created and trained our model. In the next task, we are going to test and evaluate the performance of our model with the test data we held out just before training. See you in the next task. Have a nice day. Hello and welcome back. In this task, we will test and evaluate the performance of our model using the test data we held out just before training. Let's add a new cell and get our predictions after passing in the test data. So I add a new code cell and I say predicted which is a variable to hold my predictions equals to my model which is news classifier dot predict I call the predict function on it and I pass in my test data dot predict x test that's it and let's run that It's running. And yes, it's done without any problem. So my predictions are assigned, have been assigned to predict it. Now let's compare the predicted values with the actual values and get our performance scores. For that, I am going to use the SKLAN classification report. So I add a new, a new code cell. And I say from SKLAN dot matrix. import classification report classification report and then the next thing is to print and see the performance report so i add a new code cell And I say print classification report and I pass in the predicted values, the values the model predicted as this and then the actual values that is the target values which is in white as it will make comparison between the models predicted values and the actual values which is y test and then it will print the performance scores 
So let me, I've not run this. Now classification report has been imported from sklearn.matrix and then I run and this is my classification report. We can see that almost all the performance metrics are at the high end. You can see one every way, precision, recall, F1 score, everything approximately one, i.e. almost 100% in all aspects. And that's really great. Pause the video and practice in your workspace now before proceeding. Hope you do that. In this task, we have tested and evaluated the performance of our model and it did great. In the next task, we will see how to save our trend model and download it for use in our application of choice. Hello. In this task, you will learn how to save your trend model and download it for use in your application of choice. Let's add a new cell and write the code for saving our model. We are going to use the joblib library. So let's import it first. See, so I say from sklearn dot externals import job lib. I then write the code for saving the model using job lib. So I say job lib dot dump. I pass in my model, which is news classifier. Comma, I pass in the name I want to give the saved model. So let me call it simply model dot pkl. pkl is the extension used for saving your model using joblib. Now I run the two code cells. Joblib has been imported successfully. Then I run the joblib.dom function, which serves the model with my desired name, which is model.pickle. And it shows that it's successful. After this, then we are going to make use of the drive race API to upload our model file. We are going to upload it to Google Drive. Remember that Google Drive is the storage for Google Collaborative. This time around, we are not going to use PyDrive because I get file upload error upon calling the file upload method when using PyDrive. So that's what led to the decision for use of the DriveRace API. On how to use the DriveRace API, to upload your model to Google Drive, check out this documentation notebook on Google Collab. Go to this address 
let me add two new code cells to import and use the drive rest api in order to upload the model okay let's run the two cells and this yes you can see that the model has been saved in my google drive account and this is the file id to download the model you simply go to your google drive account and search for the name you saved the model with which is model.pkl and you download it to your to a local folder on your computer so let's try that let me go to my drive account and search for the model and save it with model dot pkl and then i hit enter and yes it has been saved actually here it is model.pkl so with this i can just simply download it and it will be downloaded to my local storage you can see here it has been downloaded let me go back to my notebook pause the video and do all i have done to this point in this task you have learned how to save your trend model and download it for use in your application of choice in the next task i will show you how you can make use of your model in your application of choice See you there. Hello and welcome to the final task in this guided project. The journey has been fascinating. In this task, you will learn how to use your model in a real life application. All you have to do is to import and load the downloaded model file you got in the previous task. Here is a snapshot of what I did in my Flask Python web application that predict that predicts whether a news is fake or real. This is where I import the model. I made use of the joblib.lot method. So I said joblib.lot, I pass in the file name which is model.pkl which i downloaded and i assign it to the variable model then i call the predict method of the model which is model.predict and i pass in the json request and assign everything the result returned to prediction which i then return to the web client in general, the input you are to pass into the predict method is the news title you want to predict. You put it as string inside Python list. Remember that that's the data format of the training and test data you used earlier. This is the format. News title. Equals to you put the news title in a string and inside a python list so for example let's say the news title is man has now landed on mars the value returned by the predict method 
still in my application the value this predict method with will return that is what is assigned to this prediction is the answer which you use to cause some action happen depending on your application is it if zero is returned as the answer then remember that going by our choosing model design it means the news is fake and you display for example fake news in the writing to the user of the application let's illustrate some of that let's say that's my news title and let me try using my model to predict the category of this news title which reads man has now landed on mars let's see what the model will return so let me say prediction that is what my model will return equals to i call my model news classifier dot predict and then i pass in this news title man has now landed on mars which is which has been saved in the news title variable i created above so i say news title so to see the answer let me use print i say print prediction and let's run that yes you see zero has been returned and based on our model design zero means fake so the model has correctly categorized our news it is telling us that the news is fake and really the news is fake no man has landed on mars up to this time one important point to note is the version of the cited line you install on your machine and the one installed on google collab here you might get issues in using the downloaded model if the versions are different if you encounter any issue you can check the version of cited line and other packages installed here in your collab workspace using the code below and you install same version on your computer or deployment environment so just just write pip list and you get list of all the installed packages in your collab notebook congratulations for making it this far you have learned how to develop a data science project from preparing your data up to deploying your model all from the comfort of your web browser using Google Collaboratory. Next time you need to develop a data science project, do remember that you must not get a high capacity and a fast computer.